So in the rather long <coughs> first part of this, <coughs> we added in the HTML for this design. So we took this design and converted it all into our HTML elements for the page. We did not actually export the images yet, and don't worry about that, we'll get to it. But what I wanted to get to now was the basic grid markup to put it into this 12 column grid that we have. So I'm going to turn the grid columns back on. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger here, and we'll pull it down where we can see it. And so what we're going to start doing is looking at what we need to do to make this into the grid that we want it to be. And here is the document itself. The first two pieces actually are sort of go all the way across uh, what they need to go across. So they're sort of okay for now, but um, not quite there. Uh, and, and actually in order to do any of this and, and have it work, let's take a step back. Uh, and we, we can already tell here that because we designed with a grid in mind, we know how many columns each thing should be, right? So we have our 12 column grid, and I can tell here for friends, I can count one, two, three, four, five, right? This was six columns wide. The other thing that we need before that is we've got to go back to our HTML document here, and I need to make sure that I add in my link element to link in that grid style sheet. Um, Right, so here's the the pieces of the link element. So it has a rel of style sheet. The href is where you can go find that style sheet. Now, in in my case, uh, just to show you, oops, uh, sorry, uh, let me go back there. This is the document we're on. Let's do it here. Okay. Um, I have the PSD files here, so we'll, we'll take a look at more of those later. Um, I actually have some test documents out. These are actually finished HTML that I just did to test things out before I made the screencast here. Uh, but this is the file that we're working with, the index.html. And in CSS, what I want to link into now is the 960 CSS and the reset CSS. This one actually was a failed experiment that we'll see. And then we'll add our own CSS later uh, in another screencast. That's the what I'm calling Maya CSS. Uh, and this is something uh, I can I, I may actually uh, not not show you. So don't worry about that. But the main one main ones for the 960 grid are the 960 CSS and the reset CSS. So I want to link to both of those files from index.html. So I have to tell it to go to CSS and then to each one of those and they're two separate link elements. So I don't need the slash there. I can just say CSS, and then we have one that's 960 CSS. And on the media for now, I'm going to write all. So what media let you do is, is attach style sheets to, to, to different media people are using, such as um, a screen, a mobile, you know, a, a TV, because there's people who, who watch the internet on their TV, and, and things like that. And uh, for now, I'm just not going to have a, a title in there. I'm going to take that out. Uh, we don't need it. Caraset UTF-8 is <clears throat> not a bad thing to have in there, just telling you the browser what character set your style sheet is using. Most of you will just be using plain you know, text style sheets, and so you won't really need this character set unless you want to type in some other f language or you know use some other characters in it. For now, I'm going to leave this out just to um, keep it a little bit narrower, a little bit not quite so wide, and I'm going to well, maybe we'll pull this out just a touch so we can get that there without breaking. All right. So that links to my 960 CSS, and then basically I'm I'm going to copy this link. So Control C, Control V are obviously things that you should uh, learn on your computer. Uh, on on the Mac, it's the command Apple C uh, command V. So we have 960 CSS and reset. Dot CSS. All right, so we're making sure we link to those two style sheets. Now, <clears throat> one of the things that will happen now is because I have this class of container 12 around everything, you're going to see some big difference in how, how it looks. So here's how it looks now. Once I apply that 960 and I refresh it, boom, uh, we get a lot of s different things going. The reset takes away all the default spacing that we have in places. The other part of it, centers it, so that's the container that that makes it centered. If you wanted to, you could also apply for now uh, the text.css to it. I, I tend not to do that because I don't want it to get in the way of me styling the text myself and I want to make sure I do everything that I want to do with the text.
um, but if you wanted it to you know look a little bit better you could do that so now we're we're starting to look a little bit better here so the first one the fourth birthday that's basically what we want it's there uh, it has the image they both let's go back to the Photoshop file here they both go all the way across so let's move on to the next part of it which is friends and family and remember we here we said that friends was six wide and family was also six columns wide so let's go into our our HTML there and do that so for friends <coughs> we have class equals grid underscore six right because that's how you do it and for family we have the same thing so let me copy that and now let's take a look back there so there we go so we have friends and family with grid six now the other thing that you you want to do is <clears throat> in in certain cases to make sure that you also if something is is j you know just like let's say our, our header we want it to to go all the way across I can put in a class there equal to grid 12 to show that that goes all the way across and then that's going to make sure it lines up so let me I'm going to remove that again just quickly just so you can see what the difference is what's going on here I don't know if you can see this small gap here right so there's a small gap out there and there's actually a, a small one over here too um, that gets added in and then when I put in the class here for the header I'm gonna watch that go away okay so that went away and the reason for it is if you don't put in the the gap the by built into the 960 grid system is a little bit on the each side of a margin and, and so that margin gets taken up by any div remember divs go and try to stretch the whole page so technically most of your 960 GS page most of your content is really between 940 pixels wide because there's 10 on each side okay so <clears throat> there we go and we have um, some things going on. What I'm also going to use here to help me as I'm, as I'm doing this and, and and see if things are what I sort of think it is, is I have a little overlay here that's the 960 gritter, all right, and it shows us the the grid layout on top of what we're doing. And if you want to get this on yours, uh, I have a link to it elsewhere, but you know, if you, if you search for 960 uh, gritter, you should get to that this 960 gritter here and it's just an, an easy way to do it and you basically like take this piece here you click take this link and drag it up into your bookmark like that your bookmark bar I'm gonna drag this one out uh, I forget how to remove this now delete because uh, I already I already have it over here and so that's kinda cool and you can go to any site but you know it's really designed for 960 grid sites but any site you want you click the button it adds it on top here. You can change, you know, which columns you're using, and it has more than what 960 does um, initially. Um, a few other pieces you can do is you can change the color of it if you want to change the color. Uh, if you don't want the horizontal lines, you uncheck that box so it can just show you those. And you can say invert vertical, which means that now that the color is applied to the columns and not the gutters in between them. Um, so I'll make this um, maybe a a pink kind of color or whatever. Um, I'm gonna make the, all these less here. All right, so I'm just I'm just adding a little bit more color here. I'm actually gonna copy this in case I want to use it again later. And so this now can help you see what's going on. All right, so now that we see here, these are aligned. The ones that I've given the grid class to are aligned properly here on the left without the margin on the left there and friends as well whereas the other ones have this this has sort of an extra margin I think I can change that um, uh, I forget how it is anyway uh, I guess maybe maybe you can it just does by, by default but technically it's not really a full 20 pixel margin on either side that 960 grid system does it's really only 10 pixels that it adds 
on either side here. That's why you see this is over 10 pixels because it's going to be lined up um, right on that 10 pixels there. All right, but all these so far are nice and perfectly aligned how they should be. And remember these images here I made a little bit smaller because we're adding uh, 20 pixels of padding around it uh, to get that border on it. And so that's why these images don't quite go over and why this these two don't match up here. So we're, later on we're going to add some borders around those images. Okay. So let's keep going. <coughs> so we got the, the, the family done. Now we're going to move on to read all about it. So the f so we're going to add a 12 column around the whole thing, and uh, <coughs> I mean sorry, a 12 column on the the H2, and the three columns. Oh uh, wait, actually four. It looks like one, two, three. Yeah, four columns on each of the other ones. So this one gets a grid. I'm oh, sorry, class equals grid. 12 and then presence gets an ID of that and a class equals grid 4. I'm going to copy that including the little space on it so that I can then add that to food by pasting in and fun by pasting in. And let's take a look at how that looks now. So when you refresh this it'll take away the the grid you can just click it again if you want unfortunately it doesn't remember what you had so you know <sighs> too bad for that um, so we have it we have read all about it with presence food and fun and then we're, now we're going to go to the video gallery which is a little bit more tricky but we can handle that too so the first one is we have um, a one, two, three, four column one, and then there's this blank column in the middle. We kind of added a, a column in the middle between images. So we can either do that as a suffix to to this one here. So after this, we can have a suffix, or we could also have a prefix to that one to add that blank space in. So I'm going to add a, a suffix to video. So video is going to be four with a suffix of one, and then images is going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven for the images. And then we'll do that. So let's scroll down here. And this is again why it's so important to give your things names and IDs because it's very easy to see it. So um, the video gets a class equal to. So we said a grid of four with then space suffix of one. And then images gets class equals grid six. All right, and so that should give us start of what we want. All right, so we have video, which is four. Then we have a empty class here, empty uh, run. That's the suffix, and then six over here. Actually, sorry, no, that should be seven, four, five, yeah, seven. So, change that to seven. Let's save it, and now what should we should see is that this text that I had put at six should now fill that out there. And there we go. Okay. And so that's seven. Now we need to deal with this stuff in here a little bit uh, and and modify that. So let's take a look at that piece. So we go back again to our Photoshop document. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit here on it, and there we go. Okay, so we start with our H4 that goes all the way across, so that's good. Um, that looks like it's it's working just fine. And then the next one is a paragraph. The paragraph now is only three wide, and that, like I said, is going to get an alpha because now it's nested. So let's go into our paragraph there, and that gets a class equals grid 3 and also alpha right uh, and actually let me not put it in I'll show you what happens if you don't put the alpha and omega in so that's grid 3 and then gallery um, 1 gets 2 and gallery 2 they're both two columns wide so um, go back to our code here gallery 1 gets a class equal to grid 2 and this gets 
class equals grid2. So let's take a look at that in our browser. All right, so it sort of did that there, but if I put the gridder on here, we're going to see that there's this little gap that we don't really want. This should be right up next to that part there, and it's not, and what it's, and this this should here should be there. And because of that, this one now got broken down to the next one. So this is a little bit a little lesson for you in how floats work. So one of the ways that we get these block level elements to come up next to each other is that they're given a float property. And a float basically just says if if the block level elements, the width will fit, um, stack them up next to each other. And as soon as they don't fit, then boom, move it down to the next line. So what's happening is um, we get our, our block here. That's great. Uh, and it's given a width of whatever three columns wide is. And then this one, when we give it a grid two, it gets a width of whatever two is. And the other one does two. But because they're offset now, there's no room to fit that other two columns in. It's like, oops, it goes over a little bit. So it just pops that right down uh, to the next row. So this is where our alpha and omega will come in and fix the day for us. So we go back to our piece here. And the paragraph got the alpha class. So what what what's really happening is that all the any content you have in in, in a grid. Let me just do, show this really quick before we finish that up. The way in behind the scenes that it's working a little bit is that this, in addition to getting a width that's three columns wide, is also getting ten pixels on either side of it as a margin. All right, and when you give it an alpha class, it takes that left margin away so that it's flush left. And the omega class um, takes this extra right margin that we have away, so it's flush right on that side. And that's essentially what the alpha and omega do, and is necessary for nested columns. OK, so we have alpha here under that first one, and then under the last one, which is gallery 2, we'll do omega. And now let's go back to our design and see how that looks. Ah, and there we go. So now it's all nice and done out. So now we have our basic design out. And what we would do next is add our own style sheet to help add in what fonts we want to use, add a little bit of better spacing between these things, uh, and so on and, and so forth. So that's the next step, really, is to say, OK, now that you have a basic design, Let's add some styling to it. And for this week, what I really want you to get to is I want you to at least get to this point uh, where you can get it to here first, where you've taken it to HTML, and then you've taken that HTML and added some classes to it for the grid classes. You haven't had to write any CSS yourself first. And you should have a, a basic approximation of what your layout is like. Now, obviously, this is without the real images and so forth, but we get the basic idea of our layout.